Hello, I am Miss Anne, and we're going to start today by singing the song, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God. is Jeremiah 1 5 before I formed you in the womb I knew you and before you were born I consecrated you I appointed you a prophet to the nation that is our memory verse let's say it together Jeremiah 1 5 before I formed you in the womb I knew you and before you were born I consecrated you I appointed you a prophet to the nations God was talking to Jeremiah, but this is true for every one of us. God also has a great plan for each of us. If we will only find that plan, if we turn to the Lord God, confess our sin and ask that he forgive us. When we do that, the Lord God sends God the Holy Spirit to be with us and guide us in the wonderful plan that the Lord God has for each one of us. Our stories concerned two kings in the land of Judah today. In Judah, during King Josiah's reign, the book of God's law was found in the temple. Josiah made sure it was read to the people of Judah. Then the people knew God's law. It was up to them if they would turn back to the Lord God. Urged on by Josiah, Jeremiah the prophet, and others, false idols and places of worship were smashed, but people did not turn back to the Lord God completely. The idols were destroyed, but they did not change their hearts. King Josiah was fatally wounded in a battle and returned to Jerusalem to die. He had a big funeral as the people really loved him and he recognized how much good he had done for the country. Second Kings 23 verse 31 Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. And Pharaoh Necho put him in bonds at Riblah, the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem, and laid on the land a tribute of 100 talents of silver and one talent of gold. Good King Josiah had three sons who eventually became kings of Judah. They were Jehoahaz, Eliakim, who became Jehoiakim, and Mataniah, whose name became Zedekiah. Jehoahaz only lasted three months before Pharaoh Necho of Egypt put him in prison and demanded money from the country of Judah, a hundred talents of silver and one talent of gold. Verses 34 and 35. And Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in place of Josiah his father's, and changed his name from Eliakim to Jehoiakim. But he took Jehoahaz away, and he came to Egypt and died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the command of Pharaoh. 
He exacted the silver and gold of the people of the land from every one according to his assessments and to give it to Pharaoh Necho. Verses 36 and 37. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zebida, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all his fathers had done. Jehoiakim did as much evil as had Manasseh and Ammon, his great-grandfather and his grandfather. He did not follow his father, Josiah, who worshipped the true and living God. God called the man Jeremiah to preach and to tell people that, unless they repented and obeyed, God would send the Babylonians to take them as captives. Jeremiah was a prophet, one who speaks for God. In the book of Jeremiah, we learn of God's call to him. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Verse 5 is our memory verse. Let's say it together. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you to be a prophet for the nations. God was telling Jeremiah that God had a plan for Jeremiah to be a prophet to the nations before Jeremiah was even born. And God has a wonderful plan for each one of us. Three years after becoming king, Jehoiakim heard the news that the Egyptians had been defeated by the Babylonians at the Battle of Carchemish in 605 BC. Jeremiah 36 verses 1 and 2. In the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Take a scroll and write on it all the words I have spoken to you against Israel and Judah and the nations. From the day I spoke to you, from the days of Josiah until today. God had been talking and telling Jeremiah what was going to happen to many nations. Now Jeremiah is to write the things down. Verse 3, God continues, It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the disaster I intend to do to them, so that everyone may turn from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquities and their sin. God is warning the people that if they continue to turn away from the Lord God, he will bring about the disaster he said would come. Kings 18 During this time, the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar swooped down the coast near Jerusalem to capture the Philistine cities controlled by Egypt. Verse 4 Then Jeremiah called Baruch the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote on a scroll at the dictation of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord that he had spoken to him. Jeremiah dictated the words from God, and Baruch wrote them down on the scroll. Verses 5 and 6a. And Jeremiah ordered Baruch, saying, I am banned from going to the house of the Lord, so you are to go. And on the day of fasting, in the hearing of all of the people in the Lord's house, you shall read the words of the Lord from the scroll that you have written at my dictation. King Jehoiakim had forbidden Jeremiah to be in the temple of God because the King Jehoiakim did not want to hear God's word. Jeremiah continues in verses 6b and through 8. You shall read them also in the hearing of all the men of Judah who come out of their cities. It may be their plea for mercy will come before the Lord and that everyone will turn from his evil way. For great is the anger and wrath of the Lord has been pronounced against this people. And Baruch did all that Jeremiah the prophet ordered him about reading from the scroll the words of the Lord in the Lord's house. Baruch did what he was to do. Verses 9 and 10. In the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, in the ninth month, all the people of Jerusalem and all the people who came from the cities of Judah to Jerusalem 
proclaimed a fast before the Lord. Then, in the hearing of all the people, Baruch read the words of Jeremiah from the scroll, in the house of the Lord, in the chamber of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, the secretary, which was in the upper court at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house. Baruch was faithful and did as Jeremiah told him to do. Verses 11 and 12. When Micaiah, the son of Gemariah, the son of Shaphan, heard all the words of the Lord from the scroll, he went down into the king's house, into the secretary's chamber, and all the officials were sitting there. Micaiah was the grandson of Shaphan, the secretary. He heard the words of the Lord that Baruch was reading. He reports to the officials. Verses 13 and 14. And Micaiah told them all the words he had heard when Baruch read the scroll on the hearing of the people. Then all the officials sent Jehudai to Baruch, saying, Take in your hand the scroll that you read in the hearing of the people, and come. Baruch is told to come and read the scroll to the king's advisors. Verses 14b through 17. So Baruch took the scroll in his hand and came to them. And they said to him, Sit down and read it. So Baruch read it to them. When they heard all the words, they turned to one another in fear. And they said to Baruch, We must report all these words to the king. Then they asked Baruch, Tell us, please, how did you write all those words? Was it at his dictation? The king's advisors are fearful when they hear the word of the Lord. They ask if Baruch had written the words that Jeremiah spoke. Verses 18 and 19. And Baruch said to them, He dictated all these words to me while I wrote them in ink on the scroll. Then the official said to Baruch, Go and hide, you and Jeremiah, and let no one know where you are. The officials realized that the king may not receive the word of God from Jeremiah. So, before taking it to the king, they tell Baruch that he and Jeremiah must go someplace and hide until they know the response of the king. Verse 20. So they went into the court to the king, having put the scroll in the chamber of Elishama, and they reported all the words to the king. These men were fearful of ta taking this to the king, but they did it. Verses 21 and 22. Then the king sent Jehudai to get the scroll, and he took it from the chamber of Elishama, and Jehuda read it to the king and all the officials who stood beside the king. It was the ninth month, and the king was sitting in the winter house, and there was a fire burning in the fire pot before him. It's winter, and the king is sitting by a fire. Verse 23 tells us of the terrible thing that King Jehoiakim does. As Jehudai read three or four columns, the king would cut them off with a knife and throw them into the fire in the fire pot until the entire scroll was consumed and that fire was in the fire pot. Yet neither the king nor his servants who heard all these words were afraid, nor did they tear their garments. The king and his servants were not afraid of destroying God's word. But in verses 25 and 26, we learn, even when Elnathan and Deliah and Gemariah urged the king not to burn the scroll, he would not listen to them. And the king commanded that Jeremiah, the king's son, seize Barak the secretary and Jeremiah the prophet. But the Lord hid them. The king's officials were afraid, and they tried to stop the king from destroying God's word. Remember, the officials had told Jeremiah and Baruch to hide. They must have known what it was likely that the king would do. Verses 27 and 28. Now, after the king had burned the scroll with the words that Baruch had written at Jeremiah's dictation, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Take another scroll and write on it, all the former words that were in the first scroll, which Jehoiakim the king of Judah has burned. God tells Jeremiah to take another scroll and write on it all the words that the king burned. That would have been many hours of work both times. Verse 29. And concerning Jehoiakim, 
the king of Judah, you shall say, Thus says the Lord, You have burned this scroll, saying, Why have you written in it that the king of Babylon will certainly come and destroy this land and will cut off from it man and beast? Jeremiah is to add additional words in this scroll. He repeats the words that King Jehoiakim said, and then he adds these new words from the Lord God. Verse 30 and 31. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit on the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out to the heat by day and by frost by night. And I will punish him and his offspring and his servants for their iniquity. I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and upon the people of Judah all the disaster that I have pronounced against them, but they would not hear. God gives these specific words to King Jehoiakim, telling the king what would happen to him and his descendants. This is all in the book of Jeremiah that we have in our Bible today. 2 Kings chapter 24 verse 1a In his days Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant for three years. Babylon now rules the area. That meant Jehoiakim had to pay tribute to King Nebuchadnezzar. He gave the Babylonians the things of gold and silver from the temple of God. 2 Kings 24 verse 1b and 2 tells us that King Jehoiakim then turned and rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. And the Lord sent against Jehoiakim bands of Chaldeans and bands of Syrians and bands of Moabites and bands of Ammonites, and sent them against Judah to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord that he had spoken by his servants, the prophets. God sent warriors of the people groups around Judah to harass and destroy them, but the people did not turn back to the Lord God. Verse 3 and 4. Surely this came upon Judah at the command of the Lord to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, an earlier king, according to all he had done, and also for the innocent blood he had shed. For he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, and the Lord would not pardon. The Lord God again refers to the terrible sin of King Manasseh. Manasseh had killed many innocent people who were only trying to stay true to the Lord God. Even the reforms by King Josiah did not change the way that most of the people were living their lives. That is true for us today. Many people are ignoring God's word and living their lives the way they wish to do so. The result of walking away from God is separation from God. Our sin separates us from God, and our relationship can only be restored with God if, one, we believe that Jesus is God the Son, two, believe that Jesus died and rose to pay for our sin, and three, ask Jesus to forgive our sin. Then Jesus does, and he sends his Holy Spirit to guide our lives. If we choose not to ask for forgiveness, then we remain separated forever from the Lord God who loves us so very much. Verse 6, So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiachin, Chen, his son, reigned in his place. Second Kings 24, 8 tells us, that Jehoiachin reigned only three months, and then Nebuchadnezzar came and took all of his family, all who had been all of the family of Jehoiakim, back to Babylon. Verses 13 through 16 tells us, At the same time, Nebuchadnezzar took a thousand craftsmen and smiths, the trained people, the educated people that were taken, were taken to Babylon at this time, and that included Daniel and his friends. Jeremiah 37, 1 tells us that Nebuchadnezzar placed the third son of Josiah, Zedekiah, on the throne. This fulfilled the prophecies Jeremiah had been given from the Lord concerning Jehoiakim and his descendants. If you have never asked Jesus to forgive your sin, you can do that when I pray or at any time. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we listen to these words of warning of the tribe of Judah and the other Israelites that were there that would not change their ways. And Lord, we worry, we think of our own country, Lord, 
and each one of us. If anyone has not asked you to forgive their sin, they can pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that you love me. I know that you're God, and you paid the punishment for my sin when you died on the cross. You came back to life again, proving this was true. I ask you to forgive my sin, and I know you will send the God the Holy Spirit to come into my life and to guide me so I can learn more about you as I pray and read your word. Thank you for your great love for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Next time we have the last lesson of the kings of Israel. See you next time. May the Lord bless you richly. Goodbye.